Short leaves taste good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, with a higher BAC than your ABV, Greg, Scott, and Dan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> welcome in, everybody. Oh, oh there they are. Okay, that's enough. Thank you, gents. Yes. Love it, please. Yes. Uh, welcome in. Happy New Year, fellas. Yeah, yeah happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah. Spoiler alert, or... or Peek behind the curtain, it's the first recording of the new year. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Really? We're giving away all our secrets. Could have so. fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here last week. Uh, well, it, where the hell was I? <laughs> yeah, I, I saw you on my uh, outdoor camera just snooping around. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, let him in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hell no. Turn, turn, off the yeah. turn off the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Old man's back. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, God. So, welcome in. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming back with us and joining. Hope everyone had a great little holiday season there. Hope you all drank some fantastic beers, stayed hydrated. Oh, man. And hopefully you listened to our, uh, our our hangover episode for tips and tricks and what to drink. Correct. To not be hungover. And most importantly, I hope the, the Booze League fellas did. Oh, oh yeah. That did. poor Wiley. Oh, He's yeah. probably still hurting. Probably. <laughs> I got I got a Booze League story to tell in a little bit. All right. Oh, can't uh, wait. Before we get any further, I guess I should introduce us. I'm Greg. And over there, that's Scott. Right here. And that's Dan. Happy New Year. <laughs> Now you know us all. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't listened to the show before, we have a burp word of the week every week. Uh, it's so that when Scott burps, he doesn't throw up all over the place. Yeah. Correct. Keeps him in line a little bit, if yes. you will. So, a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, so our burp word of the week, this one, real simple. I think even Dan could get this one. Ooh. New beer. Oh. oh. As in happy new beer, everyone. New beer. Yes. So uh, I hope so. Yeah. We got to make a comeback this year. 2018, yeah. it's got to be the year for us to start burping. That should be our New Year's right. resolution. There you go. Yeah, 2018, the year of the burp. Yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> resolute that I will make some burp words. That was a <laughs> almost <laughs> sentence. I can't even talk. I'm going to burp and talk at the same time. <laughs> Forget it. It's going to be rough. So, uh, New beers are our word. We'll see what we can do about that. We got a lot of show to get to for show of the year. We have a great beer of the week. In fact, it's beer science time. Ooh. Some crotch talk. Uh, we have a segment from our friend, listener, and lawyer, Elvia, about uh, the new legal weed here in California. Dan's got a movie to talk about. Yep. A little sports news. Uh, we have a new segment from our friend Nicole at beautyandbeer.com. She's talking about a new brewery. Uh, Old time you were of the week. Beer Babe and, of course, some booze news to get to. Um, so let's get right in. Oh, before I even forget, shout out, everybody, to Los Angeles. What? Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Home's coming back around. Nice. Wow. Yes. Thank you, LA. You're yeah. uh, top listeners for the last week leading up to the show. Thank wow. you very much. But I must say a very big shout out to Ashburn, Virginia, as the number one city of 2017. There you go. Yes. Thank you, Ashburn. Yeah. Ashburn, the number one listening city. Got to love them. Of 2017. So thank you to Ashburn. Sort of thank you to L.A. Not as big as a thank you. Like a thanks to L.A. Yeah, well, <laughs> but like a thanks to Ashburn. The uh, trophy is on their way, Ashburn. Yes, yes. Uh, send me an address yes, or something. Put, put it in <laughs> City Hall there and display it proudly. Yes, exactly. All right. Like our uh, burp word suggests, it's a new year. We got some new beer. New year, new beer. Let's do some beer science. Yeah. All right. From a bottle, from a can, why don't people understand my inebriation? Beer. Glass bottles, aluminum cans, hops and malts, and magic in my hand. We're drinking beer science. Beers we've never had before. Open and we pour, and time to drink beer science. Oh, time to drink indeed. Oh, yes. If only I could learn how. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right, it's beer science time. I've been very excited for this to happen. I made a special little trip during our break down to Firestone uh, Propagator down in Venice, California. Oh, wow. And picked us up a nice little pack of Wookus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leo V. Ursus is the series. It's Wookus. It is a throwback to one we loved very dearly, Wookie Jack. 
Oh, okay. One of the discontinued uh, That's right. Propagator series. Gotta look it up. Yes. <laughs> so luckily for all of us and all the listeners, they're going to be so excited that they can't try this. Uh, I had one bottle of Wookie Jack left in my fridge, and I have a fresh pack of Wookies. So we're going to do some beer science. Oh, nice. Oh, mm-hmm. thanks, oh nice. So a real load of Wookie Jack first, which is in your smaller glasses, gentlemen. Okay. Uh, Wookie Jack, 4.25 out of 5 on Beer Advocate, 8.3%, 80 IBUs. It is a black rye IPA. Uh, Wookie Jack's our first foray into the dark outer world of black IPAs. Rich dark malts and spicy rye careen into bold citrus-laden hops, creating a new dimension in IPA flavor. Mm. This brew has been wow. left unfiltered and <laughs> unfined to retain all of its texture and character. Wookie Jack is gnarly on the outside, yet complex and refined on the... Excuse me as I burp. Inside. All right. <laughs> so that's Wookie Jack. That's the little one. I'm going to take a little sip of this, baby. Oh, my baby. God. I haven't had this in over a oh, year. Oh, man. I love this stuff. Oh, man. Yes. Right? I mean, you could taste, like, like the alcohol wow. on it and everything. Yep. Like, I don't know. To me, like, I need a little bit of that sometimes. Yeah. Like, you know, to really be. And then it's classy glass. You put it in and kind of, right. kind of makes it unfair. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Our like, little, oh, my little Firestone sniffer. Yeah, 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 yeah for there. sure. Oh, yeah. my God. I feel real classy now. You need the proper glassware. Mm. All right. So I definitely get uh, some, even like a little bit of chocolate in there. Correct. Oh, yeah. Notes of chocolate, some malt, uh, a little bit of hot. Not too crazy on the hop. Mm. It's a nice, like, rich, malty IPA. I right. dig it. All right, so now we'll put it up against Wookus. Okay. Leo Beer versus Wookus. 4.365 out of 5. So te- uh, technically a better score, but it only has five scores. On Beer Advocate, 8.2%. Once thought to be extinct, the Wookie family comes roaring back with its wooliest progency. Progeny? That's a big word. Yet, an Imperial Black Rye IPA that is wickedly hoppy, righteously spicy, and fearsome in flavor. While exhibiting DNA from its Wookie Jack ancestry, Wookus offers next-generation attitude with amplified hop aromas and a bit of rebellious dankness. Dank. (laughs) The result is a beer that blends the familiar with the ferocious. Right out of the Firestone Walker mythology and into your glass, behold, the beast that we call Wookus. You can definitely test, uh, bye, bye, bye. Mm. taste a lot more of the uh, dankness mm-hmm. under the Wookus as opposed yes. to, um, I don't know, like I said, there's there's more of a, there's a different finish to the to the Wookie Jack that I don't know, I'm really digging right now. I almost feel like the Wookie Jack is like the dessert yeah, to Wookus. Yeah. yeah. Wookus is a little danker, a little crisper. Yeah, it definitely a tastes cleaner. more like an IPA. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a little more IPA-ish, Correct. I would say. Where the Wookie Jack, the old one, uh, almost drinks itself like a dessert beer. Yeah. Would probably be just phenomenal barrel aged. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. A um, little little more booze out of the Wookie Jack, even though it's only 0.1% more. I, I taste a little bit more out of the Wookie Jack in a nice way, not in like a hot, burn your throat kind of way. Mm. Um, and definitely more chocolate out of the Wookie Jack. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Do we have favorites? Wookie Jack. Wookie Jack. Sorry, without hesitation, you kind of got to go there. <laughs> Bring Jack back. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh, new hashtag. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> run home Jack. <laughs> Anybody? Any Hook fans out there? Home run Jack. All right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think Wookie Jack is great. Yeah. I think it's a very nice sipping beer, but I will say I'll drink Wookie any day. I mean, oh, don't get me wrong. It Correct. is delicious. I won't pour on, it out. Yeah, that's for sure. That's right. Had it on tap down at the Propagator. Oh. Phenomenal. Yeah. Thanks, sir. It's, it's yeah. still good, yeah. Also, I had a friend that was uh, with us. It's not real versed in beer to the point where, like, I was like, "What you know? What styles do you?" Want? He's like, "I don't know. I like dark." I'm like, "Okay, well, we're at Firestone. You're, do you want dark like a stout or dark like barrel aged fucking <laughs> booze fest?" Yeah, right. Like, what do you? He goes, "I don't know." I said, "Okay, here we go." <laughs> They ended up getting like a taster of just about everything they had. Oh, like, oh, so man. this is this. And this is, so we had like Sticky Monkey on tap and oh, uh, some Velvet Merkin on tap. By the end of it, didn't know what he wanted still. So. Yeah, exactly. And he wanted it all at that point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But he left a whole lot smarter. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's the goal of the show. It is the goal of the show. So I'm definitely going to drink the Wookus first. I think I'll finish nicely with the Wookus. God damn, yeah. that is good. It is so effing good. All right, we got other things we got to talk about. Wookus is the dinner, and the uh, Wookie Jack will be our dessert. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm drinking. Yeah. yeah. I dig it. I agree wholeheartedly. It goes right in with my liquid diet. Boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. In fact, you get like a two-course meal over there. That's right. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> we've added some time away. Mm-hmm. We might have some uh, grievances to share, Ooh. so let's get into that. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. 
I think Dan has a grievance. Yes, issue. I do have a grievance. Uh, oh, good. He looks and, angry. Yeah, I'm not too, too angry, but I am pretty angry. <laughs> um, Confused. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, I have a movie review today. Right. But I did try to watch some other movies, you know. Um, Trying to do your job. Yeah, you know, over the, you know, the break and everything. But, uh, I tried to watch Kingsman, the, the, you know, the, the second Kingsman. Oh, the new movie. one. Yeah. And, uh, Man, dude, I totally, you know, these are just some quick reviews I'm doing. Uh, Kingsman just sucked. Really? I like the one. first one. Yeah, me too. Okay. But that second one, I just, like, I just couldn't get past, like, the intro where it was just so much, like, CGI. Like, uh... everything was just CGI. Like, even, like, they're fighting inside of a car. And the whole fight scene, like people inside the car, and then the background itself was all CGI. It seemed like I was uh, like, "Oh my god, this sucks!" Am I watching a cartoon or <laughs> what's going on here? And then yeah, I don't know. He was like married to the princess. I was like, "Okay, I'm done." Like enough. I think five ten minutes in, Woo. I just I was like, "I'm done with this you shit." Drink to get through that one. Oh my god, quickly! And I was like, "I can't drink anymore." Like I'm just going to drink to be happy now and then turn this <laughs> fucking movie off. That's what I always tell my girlfriend. Just drinking to be happy, baby. That's right. <laughs> So that movie sucked, and then okay. uh, and then another one I tried to watch was a uh, Jim and Andy, which is a uh, it's a documentary hmm. about uh, Jim Carrey and him doing his role as uh, uh, Andy Kaufman on Man in the Mo- Man yeah. on the Moon, and uh, I thought you know that this was a documentary done by someone else who was interested in how he kind of was like a metaphor actor and really took on the role of Andy Kaufman, mm-hmm. but. Uh, uh, really what you find out is Jim Carrey basically hired a crew himself to follow him around yeah. while he is taping the movie. Yeah, and uh, and it was funny because I was like, okay, so this is a documentary about Jim Carrey by, by Jim, Jim Carrey? Carrey. <laughs> and, then, and then in the intro of the whole movie, they go, so Jim, uh, how do you want to start this documentary? He's like, huh, like that. I'm like, oh, get over yourself. You've had 20 years to figure out how you wanted to start this documentary, right. you pretentious <laughs> dickhead. Like, no I was just, kidding done with this i'm like okay i'm done with this one too did was, he at least talk out of his butt at any point <laughs> <laughs> someone should have reminded any, him like, any hey. fire tips or anything? <laughs> yeah <laughs> someone should remind him that, that's a, that's how he earned his uh his, right. his living right there is talking out of his butt and making faces i mean come on dude like, it's like jim carrey doing a documentary about a documentary yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my god, it was documentary Inception. You're right. Oh my god, was was it as bad as the Truman? Sh- no, <laughs> that Truman Show that he was on. Yeah, he was in yeah, that yeah. too. Was it as bad as that? It must have been worse. Than that. <laughs> Again, five ten minutes, I was done. I'm like, I, I, as soon as I found out he did it, I'm like, oh fuck this, this is insane. Like he's so once again, you're drinking to get through. Yeah, again. So give this man a beer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, just two movies in a row that you know, please avoid at all costs. They are awful. Oh, that sounds awful. That's right. Uh, speaking of awful, we've made lots of fun of uh, the commissioner of the Booze League on the show for, for no showing on us to a taping of our <laughs> glorious podcast because he was, uh, well, hungover. Oh, yeah, couldn't that's make right. The- hungover like a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it couldn't get any worse until Uh-oh. I saw his sidekick, Otter, at a local brewery the other day. <laughs> right on. 14 cannons to be exact. Otter was pretty smashed, <laughs> which must take a lot of beer because that dude's like six foot six. Oh. He is a giant beast, so I really hope he doesn't hear this because he could but, probably kick my ass. <laughs> Unless he's like Wiley and probably wouldn't take much beer from his <laughs> That's true, yeah. Um, so he's he's uh, drinking pretty good, and that was a Saturday night. And uh, the next day, the commish, Wiley, texts me like, hey, man, what are you up to today? I was like, uh, just uh, you know, a little Sunday brunch, a little champagne brunch. <laughs> there you getting go. Getting pretty toasted. Why, uh-huh. what's up? He's like, oh, well, Otter was supposed to come over and record one of the booze casts, but he was too hungover. Oh, my God. I, I was like, what is wrong with you two? What's going on with them? Is there, is there some curse of the booze league where you can't handle your booze oh anymore? God. What time do they tape? I don't even know. But it was like, he was texting me at like noon. Oh, my God. It's probably about, yeah, brunch is like noon. Yeah, oh, so it's no. probably about noon. I was like, what is wrong with you bitches? Yeah. If I'm not up by noon, uh, get my gravestone ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. I'm, yeah, there's something else wrong with me at that yeah. point. Come on. I am not hung over. I am dead. Oh, God. Oh, Perhaps Lord. they'd be doing a better service if they did a podcast on how to handle your period or something. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe like what electrolytes you need to keep so, yourself functioning. Something, something yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, they don't know. Yeah. So they're not, uh, they won't be releasing a booze cast this week because Otter was hung over. But good news, everybody. We are. We're we always showed here. up. Yeah. The, the fact, only thing that keeps me from getting here is my stupid car. <laughs> right. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And not because you're too drunk to drive it, just because oh, your car right. sucks. Yeah, exactly. You drive it drunk. Your that's car's hung over. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your car's been it's hanging out with Wiley. Car. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let Wiley borrow your car. <laughs> oh, God. On a happier note, I must uh, report, I did some very important beer research over the over our little break. 
did a, a day in Ventura, California, where we oh. hit up many of their local offerings. Nice. Start off with Topa Topa. Oh, God damn. If you guys have not tried Topa Topa, oh, yeah. it is good stuff. It's gangster. Chief Peak is their kind of like big IPA that everyone knows mm-hmm. about in the area. I like it. I don't love it. And I've had it before. So I went to the brewery. I had like everything but that. Okay. And their other stuff is great. I mean, Chief Peak is it's fine. It's good. It's just... I don't think it's as good as everyone says it is. Well, yeah, and that, and it's uh, it's highly saturated in all the other areas. So if you if you yeah. had something from Topa Topa, most most likely it is Chief Peak. Right, exactly. It's mm-hmm. at every festival and every restaurant that carries Topa Topa. Correct, that Chief Peak. But their other stuff is phenomenal. They're doing great nitro stouts. Uh, just, they have a good pilsner on tap. Oh man, check out Topa Topa. That yeah. was super friendly too. I was talking to the girl behind the the bar there, and I had a great time. And what, depending on what day you go to, they have like a nice like truck there. Like they usually like oh yeah, they'll have posted what days to go. You know, for the food trucks and mm-hmm. everything. So that's pretty cool too. Yes, that's always nice. Uh, soak up the booze. Went to Ventura Coast Brewing Company. They had a good uh, like spiced. It was like Choco Vesa, like a spiced stout. Oh, that was good. I hate I hate to talk shit about local beer. Oh, the rest of it was pretty much. Oh no, yeah. I didn't want to hear that. I know wow. I didn't. I was in fact I asked the girl at Topa Topa what she thought about that place. She was like, oh, it's great. You're gonna love it. I said, oh, good. I haven't tried it yet. I can't wait to try it. Eh, maybe it was a off day for what they had on tap. There was one beer that they had on the menu that they were out of that I wanted oh, to try. So that must be their thing. I'll give them the benefit and say that was their best beer they had on tap. Correct. But, uh, the stout was good. Good stout. Mm. So if you like a Choco Vesa, hit up in Turcos Brewing, get their uh, stout. Had happy hour at this place called Rumfish Evino. If anybody's hanging out in Ventura, any listeners from SoCal decide to take a little day trip to Ventura, California, Rumfish Evino has a phenomenal happy hour, and they have some pretty good beers on tap. Like I had some Mammoth Brewing. They had some other oh, good cool. stuff. Yeah, some nice local stuff. So check that place out. It's kind of hidden away, and you walk in, it's like this outdoor Happy hour. You don't even feel like you're in Ventura anymore. It's cool. Oh, right on. Uh, then we went over to Surf Brewery. I think oh, everyone's yeah. had surf at one I point have. or another. Yes. Correct. Uh, I walked in and same place. I've been. I was there once, like five, six years ago. I haven't been there in a long time. And I walked in. I was like, "What is going on here?" Like, a, it was empty, and I'd never seen it empty before. Mm. And B, they had some other name on all the stuff. Hmm. And it was concrete jungle, like brewing project. What the. Fuck. So finally, I asked the very attractive beer tender. <laughs> oh, hey. Who, what, I said, this is going to be a dumb question. But what's the difference between uh, Concrete Jungle and Surf? She goes, not a dumb question. Apparently, the owners of Concrete Jungle, which is a place down in L.A., uh, they were having Surf do other contract brewing. And then finally, Surf decided to like the owners wanted to sell. So they sold the place, and Concrete Jungle bought it. And sometimes they brew Surf beer, and sometimes they don't. But mostly huh. don't. Wow, it was super weird. I was like, "Is so, it amicable?" He's like, "No, everyone's friendly, and you know, we, you know, the brewers here still do surf brewing for like bottle sales and stuff." Correct, and, but I mean, you come to Surf Brewery for right. If you look on like Google surf. and Yelp <laughs> and Facebook, like it's all still Surf Brewery. Hmm. I don't know what this concrete jungle. I mean, the beers were they were fine. They were good. Correct. Nothing but, to write home about. Nothing to pour out. But you're showing up for surf. I was showing up for surf because there's a couple of surf beers that I like Correct. a lot that I get in bottles from time to time. Yeah. So it's very weird, very strange. I don't know what's going on That's there. a bummer. Yeah. So uh, hopefully there's... She was saying like surf might find a new place. They might just contract their stuff out because I, I guess it's selling pretty good on the shelves in, mm. in the area. So Okay. Eh. I don't know. Hmm. It was weird. Uh, but enough about that. So that was my, my beer research. Very important. Yes. Very successful. Right uh, on. The conclusion is everybody go to Topa Topa. If you find Topa oh, yeah. Topa in your area, try it. It's Do delicious. That. Yes. Yeah. It's a cool spot, too. Like They got a little indoor-outdoor thing going oh, nice. on. Um, and dogs are allowed. We brought our dog and oh, really? bring food in if there's no food trucks, you know. So it's yeah. a good time. I don't know if Buddy would be allowed because he might, like, eat people. Yeah, he would. <laughs> yeah. He's a crazy dog. He is a crazy dog. So yeah. right here. He might uh, just devour a person. He will. Like, food truck. Who needs that? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. That's enough uh, from me. As I mentioned at the top of the show, Elvia is back, and she has a very important segment uh, educating all of us on the new weed laws in California. <laughs> and I must say, I looked it up the other day. Us in L.A., I was like, where can we get some recreational marijuana? Closest places in Hollywood. There's four places. They're all in Hollywood. Otherwise, you're going to Orange County or San Diego. Wow. wow. Yes. Uh, so anyways, here, uh, here is Elvia with new weed laws. Hollywood. Hollywood 
Hey guys, it's Elvia. Happy New Year's to you guys.、Um, I'm sure you've all heard the best news this year. As of the first of the year, California became the sixth state to sell pot to anyone 21 and older, just like buying booze now. So that means that you know, doctor recommendations for medical marijuana are no longer required. But still, if you have one, I, I suggest you keep it. So, anyways, this is the law. Basically, anyone 21 or older with a valid ID is now able to buy up to one ounce of pot.、Um, and compared to those that have a medical, mar- medical marijuana card, they're able to buy eight ounces, which is technically half a pound. There are also some limitations on the potency of the THC and the amount of concentrated cannabis that you can buy. Um, just for recreational purposes, you are allowed to buy 8 grams. The THC potency is actually less than the, ones, than the people that have a medical marijuana card. So now that you have your pot, you still can't smoke it out in the open. I mean, at least not legally. You can't even smoke it in areas where it's legal to smoke cigarettes. And、um, if you get caught, You will most likely get a ticket and have to pay about $100, $150 fine. You are allowed to have pot in your car, but it must be in a sealed container. I say just to be safe, just throw it in your trunk if you're driving with it.、Um, the other thing, it's pretty obvious. You can't get high and drive. You'll, you'll be subject to a,、uh, you know, a DUI, a pot DUI. Although, in my experience, I think a pot DUIs are, are harder to prove, but I'm sure they'll find a way.、Uh, if you do find yourself in a situation like that, just as a tip, I suggest that you take a urine test rather than a blood test. Since marijuana is detectable for longer periods in urine than in blood, then a positive urine test constitutes a much weaker proof of recent use and impairment. Than a positive blood test. So there you go. I hope all of you guys are enjoying this year and this was helpful. And that's it for me. Bye. Keep on smoking, everybody. <laughs> smoke them if you got them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dang. I can't believe you can't smoke weed in areas you can smoke cigarettes. I'd rather smell weed than cigarettes. Correct. I, I'm, yeah, I'm with that. Yeah, weed makes me thirsty. It reminds me of a nice IPA. <laughs>、mm-hmm. I must say, $100 to $150 bucks for a、uh, weed in public ticket. That's way cheaper than my drinking in public ticket I got a few <laughs> years back. That was like $250.、Oh, wow. I was in the Angel Stadium parking lot just doing a little tailgating. Don't、yeah. do that, people. Well, <laughs> I guess, like,、it. you know, when you're drunk in public, you know, it, it's a wild card. You don't know if you're going to get all violent or get,、yeah. you know, I was, sad. It was Miller Lights. I'd only had like four. There's no getting well,、yeah. drunk off of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But、yeah. if you're, like, you know, stoned in public, you're like, you're whoa, man. Your honor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If I was Wiley, I might be pretty hammered.、Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do when stoned in public? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of like walk <laughs>、well, around in circles, looking、yeah. in the air. Not another cheeseburger, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. Thanks to Elvia for that. Yes.、Um, yeah. Go weed. Correct. I guess. And stuff. I forgot to mention. Sorry, I must mention. I was、mm-hmm. texted by the person who's listening to us from downstairs. I forgot to mention one brewery that I visited in Ventura, <laughs> and that's Anna Kappa Brewing.、Yeah. And、uh, I was there many, many years ago and was not a huge fan. And yeah. Was there, yeah, was there this time? Really enjoyed it.、Oh, Get、wow. out of here. Yeah, they had an IPL that was fantastic. Because、uh, she ordered like a, a Pilsner or something like that. It was really good. Really? Yeah. How much did they get you to say that? <laughs> Seven dollars plus a free beer. Yeah. Because、yeah, locally, yeah. you're right. I mean, that is kind of like the word of mouth is that it kind of blows. Yeah. And that's, that's been the word of my mouth for, for many a year. I haven't been there in, I don't know,、Neither、six, seven、I. years. Yeah, and, correct. And、uh, I was, I mean, look, we only tried three of their beers, but、okay. they were all good. Okay. I was like, I would go there over Ventura Coast. Sorry, Ventura Coast. <laughs>、um, really enjoyed it. So, okay. Yeah. Th- Interesting. Yeah. I, I, the IPL was my favorite of the three. Might、so. give them another try.、Mm-hmm. And they had really good wings, too. Got some good、oh, chicken wings. Oh, listen to you. Chicken wings. Got some wings. <laughs> yeah. So、uh, that'll be $20. Anyway, <laughs> anyways. All right. So Dan. Oh, yeah. Saw a movie. I did. Have you seen the latest moving picture? Let's talk movies for guys. All right, so over the weekend I watched、uh, Disaster Artist, and this movie is about the making of another movie called The Room. Right. And, Which is、uh, like the worst movie ever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you know according to the internet, you know, you know the funny thing about that, too? I mean, when did you hear about The Room? I mean, the movie came out in 2003, didn't it? I probably heard about it in 17. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, isn't it kind of weird that all of a sudden it popped up and it's like, oh, here's a movie about it? And a couple nights ago, it won an Emmy. Exactly. I mean, the, movie, the first time I've heard about it. Not the room, but 
with uh, uh, yeah. James Franco yeah, for James portraying uh, the the star. The was it? he's Tommy the, whatever. Yeah, he starred in it. He directed it. He produced it, and he wrote it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so Tommy was so. Yeah, yeah, he pretty much did everything in it, and it shows. So, yeah, and uh, you know, I went and watched it. Um, I honestly thought that this movie was going to be more about. Uh, I believe I can't remember his uh, his coworker or his um, his co star's name. Uh, I, mean, I think his name was Greg in the movie or something like that. Sorry. God damn it, Greg! I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I remember him kind of like going on other places, you know, and kind of not not promoting the room or anything, but you know, uh, over the you know the course from between 2003 and now, he was just kind of saying like Tommy was crazy, and like I understand they were close at the time, but it sounded like there was some kind of falling out or something, and I thought. When he started talking about, I'm going to write a book about it and everything, I thought it was going to be more about how crazy this guy is. And I thought that's what the movie was going to be about, was just how crazy this guy was. And from another point of view, what I ended up walking into the movie and watching, though, was kind of more of a celebration of uh, Tommy Wiseau Hmm. and um, and his his achievement in making (laughs) such a terrible movie. His achievement. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I don't know. Well, Franco in his acceptance speech got up there and was like, you know, I saw this billboard back in, you know, like 99 or whatever it was. Right, right, right. And this one man with his one phone number on the billboard, like he's talking about like he's a hero. Exactly. And and I don't know. That's the problem I have with the movie. I will say... That if you want to watch a movie about the man, Tommy Wiseau, and you really think that he is some sort of genius, then go ahead and watch it because mm-hmm. uh, it really, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this. He's a lot braver than I am because I would not have the balls to go ahead and try to make a movie like that sure. and then submit it to Hollywood and let everyone <laughs> go watch it and sit up front and center and say, this is my movie. Yeah, didn't he like set up screenings and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, you know, I, I'll say he's got more balls than I do to go ahead and do that. But uh, other than that, I mean, let, let, let's let just, the record show he made a terrible movie and why are we celebrating that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the problem. like half of Hollywood? Yeah, exactly. So... So I kind of felt like that was my overall problem with the movies. I thought it was going to be more of a, like, I was going to be laughing at Tommy Wiseau, but I ended up walking out of the theater with Tommy Wiseau laughing at me, basically. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He probably Soccer. Did, yeah. <laughs> basically. In fact, he probably made some money off of you watching it. He probably. really did. He yeah. really did. And, probably more know? than he ever made on his movie. Exactly. Cause, and I still haven't watched that piece of crap, and I'm not going to watch it just because, you know, I went and saw it. So, right. you know. Uh, like I said, if, it, if there's two ways to rate it, like if you want to see it and you're really interested in this, in this man, then it's honestly a very good portrayal of him. James Franco kind of does a, you know, he I know I understand he won an Oscar, but I really believe it's kind of a cartoon version. Golden Globe, no, what was it? Golden Globe. Oh, yeah, not was it Oscar. a Golden Globe? Excuse me, Golden. Yeah, Golden Globe. Okay, so it wasn't an Oscar. Yeah, whatever the Hollywood Foreign Press one is. Okay. Yeah. Whatever Oscars haven't happened. That's February. Okay, excuse me. I'm up on all my award shows. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. He he won that and but I will say that his portrayal of Tommy Wiseau, I believe to be a little like like caricature kind of kind of like a cartoon basically. It was him, but it was uh, kind of an exaggerated version of him. I got that feeling because what he did his accent in his speech when he won. Correct. And it was very much like it was very Borat, you know, like, ah, great success, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, and the guy kind of talks that way, but at the same time, you're right, it is a little exaggerated. No, that's you know a good I mean? movie. Borat. Borat, yes. there you go. That's a great documentary. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. Like so, I said, if you if you wanted to laugh, then, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't like it. So you drink to get through it? I drink to get through it, just oh, because, like man. I said, this is a bad movie. Why do I need to... Give this man a beer. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of bad movies for me, man. You know Apparently, what? it's a bad bad couple of weeks for you. It's been awful. i got to jump in here and just say, nope. I have not seen in a long time, looking at movies, any movie that just jumps out and says, I want to go see that. Yeah, you know the last movie I saw in theaters, and this is only because like people invited me and I was a little drunk, uh, Baywatch. Oh, yeah. And it was dumb as shit, but it was yeah. funny. Correct. Yeah. But, but uh, I can't yeah. remember the last movie I saw. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. and, and to me, like I said, that 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 to me was a little weird. How I just found out about the room, and then this movie came out, and like you know, honestly, I had not never even heard of this movie, uh, Disaster right. Artist, until the other night at the award show. Oh, really? I was like, wait, what? They made a movie about the worst movie ever? Yeah, I didn't even know. It had yeah. no idea. And like I said, I don't even know that it has the staying power of uh, Ed Wood in Plan Nine from Outer Space. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I can understand where they made a movie about him because it had been what fifty years, and it's regarded as the most terrible film ever. <laughs> so you know, who knows that you know we'll all remember the room the same way. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. I forgot about it until they reminded me this earlier this year. Yeah, I heard about it earlier this year yeah. for the first time. I mean, yeah. The Room. Yeah. And then forgot about it. Correct. And then all of a sudden, this movie is winning awards. I was like, oh, it's back again. Very strange. Yeah. Because The Room was like this hipster thing. Like, hey, let's all go watch a garbage movie because we're hipsters. Yeah, like, yeah. Or we could go watch a good movie. Correct. Right. Yeah. What's up with hipsters, man? I don't know, man. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the beard. Ah, oh. Dude, I'm just saying, do beard not yeah. do not turn hipster on. Well, please, I got the please. scully cap on too right now. I know. I know I'm total hipster. All I just need is a flannel shirt. And Seriously, and some tighter jeans. I'm going to shave tonight. Yeah. Cause <laughs> or just you, take off the cap. <laughs> something, yeah. When you showed up, I, I right away I'm thinking, why is this hipster at our door? <laughs> yeah. What is it, Seattle? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Drinking fucking craft beer too. Yeah. What is wrong oh, with you? Jeez. Oh, no. Craft beer and asparagus. <laughs> I need a haircut, man. That's why I'm wearing this stupid cap. Yeah. Well, get it stat. No more cap. For All right, you. tomorrow. I will. All right. So you drank to get through it. I did. Okay. <laughs> let's uh, let's cleanse your palate. Thank you. Let's talk about something you do like. All right. And now the sports brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore chop or the one-two punch, it's time for sports. And uh, <clears throat> if I could jump in here real quick, please. I got some uh, uh, a post coming up for uh, cleaninguptheglass.com. Uh, oh, nice. It's going to be about Kobe, and huh. it's going to be uh, an epic five-part series. Oh, so, wow. Uh, one for each ring. Um, I'll be talking about uh, his number, you know, numbers 8 and 24. Sure. And uh, I'll be discussing pretty much, like, the best moments in each of those numbers. So I'm going to be going uh, best oh. season, best game, best dunk. I'll, I'll do worst moment. And uh, best buzzer beater. So I like. That. I'm gonna get my lotion ready. <laughs> if that was a movie, I'd go watch that. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's make a movie about me writing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as much as I love Kobe, that stupid cartoon that he made oh. for his retirement. <laughs> Wasn't that a little to- t- Tommy was so? I didn't even realize he made it till afterwards. Yeah. I was like, of course he made it. Of course he did. Pretend- a little Jim Carrey. Yeah, it was a cartoon of him jerking himself off. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah. But hey, I still love Kobe. Correct. Me too. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So the Jaguars. Yeah, I'm going to f- fucking butcher this. <laughs> Yannick Negeku. <laughs> You're spot on. Was I? <laughs> oh, my. I don't know. Does anybody actually know how to pronounce it? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, he accuses Buffalo Bills one and only Richie Incognito oh, <laughs> of using racial slurs on the field the no other day. No way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then he slapped his real mother in the face. <laughs> Oh, I should have pulled that voice down. <laughs> oh, man. You slap your real mother in the face. <laughs> oh, nice laugh, man. It's the worst, most forced redneck laugh I've oh, ever heard. I love that guy. Uh, yeah, what a surprise. No one's shocked there. No. But his teammates that were on the line with him are saying he did not do that. And had he uh, used racial slurs, they would have been the first ones to put him in check. Correct. Which I actually believe. I, I agree. As much as teammates, I mean, yeah. As much as I think that Richie's a racist, I think his fellow African American exactly. teammates, who are as big or bigger than him, would very much put him in his place. Yeah. If yeah. he was using some end bombs or something. Correct. Of the like. You know, I kind of wonder if uh, the people that he's picking on are the people that the whole team is picking on. Mm, you know what I mean? But, and they're like, hey, no, no, no. It's not Richie's fault. You know, whatever. And you then, do suck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe. Who Maybe. knows? But know. racism goes only goes so far. Even if you're a teammate and you fear of well, another race, you're you're not you're gonna tell your own teammate, hey, you know what? Well, maybe knock that Ru- shit off. Maybe right. Richie's not being racist this time, but the guy's like, he is being racist, and he's trying to get him in trouble. I it, it kind of seems that way. Yeah. It, it seems like the the times that we're living in is you you're racist if you don't even know it. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. You're all racist. That's yeah. right. Well, Dan's not. I, I think if you're <laughs> no. if you're not white, you're considered. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you're okay. You're, you're a funny guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's laugh at all the white people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know so I racist, do. man. I he's know a, I do. Oh, that Dan. He's so funny. He talks about white people like that. I know, man. right? Oh, That's wrong. God. Oh, Greg is so bad because he talks about Mexicans. <laughs> You know, so hey, don't be racist. Yeah, I'm how sorry. dare you? I'm sorry. Yeah, come on, only I can do that. Yeah. Hispanics, I'm sorry, Hispanics. That's right, hunky. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Dan fills our quota. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, Token Dan. Yeah. That's right. That's his new name. <laughs> Token Dan. Oh, especially man. with the new California law. <laughs> Token Dan. Oh, uh, on. Hey. To, so, anyway, so football playoffs. It's happening. Rams are out. Uh, big time, yeah, <laughs> big t- God, big time. Uh, I'm Typical sure Jackson, team. Yeah, Jacksonville will shortly be out. 
Who oh, would yeah. have thought that Jacksonville and the Bills would be in the playoffs? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. But there's dude. like some interesting upsets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Titans. I mean, look at the, how the Titans came back on the Chiefs. Well, made him their bitch. No made it, sh- made, okay. I don't know what she said. Made him their Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Chiefs really fell the hell off, though. Yeah, yeah they, I, that's what I said today. Did uh, Mariota and the offense get hot, or did the Chiefs' defense just go to sleep? They really fell know. off. I, I mean, was, what's next? Are they going to hire Kaepernick? Who, Replace wow. Alex Smith? Well, maybe he's next. Yeah. We've heard that story before. Yeah, who's next? We've, we've seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, what else? Ooh, basketball. Oh, <laughs> let's get into basketball. <laughs> so the other day, after the uh, Thunder won, Mello was talking to a sideline reporter <laughs> when his own teammate, Russell Westbrook, came up and poured a little water on top of his head in a uh, congratulatory celebration. Well, it scared Mello, and this was his reaction. To figure out exactly what they was doing. Was- oh, oh, motherfucker! <laughs> 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 I love the way he says that. Oh God! With the C K A at the end. Yeah. You know? Oh motherfucker! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we need one more of those. Yeah, it's exactly too good. What they was doing? Oh, oh, oh motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Man, love right it. on TV. I love it. Oh, so good. Thank you, Mel. That's the best thing you've done in your career. It really. Without is. being racist, we all know how black people are afraid of water. So. Oh no, maybe I was racist. That sorry. was racist. Oh, so I'm sorry. Only oh, Dan can say. Sorry, that. Dan. That's can right. you say that? Yeah. Can, <laughs> I'm not going to touch better. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's not stupid. <laughs> but speaking of stupid, Big Baller Brand Uh-oh, has God. received an F rating from the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> from the real BBB. Yeah, triple B after triple B. Bam. Uh, apparently, they've had numerous complaints. One, I was reading one of the complaints. The guy ordered shoes, shoes that were <laughs> marked uh, rare and spent over $2,000. Oh, and then they said they ran out and they won't give him a refund. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. No refund. That's, no refund. That's good business. Right that's there. a good business. Dang, that's awesome. By the way, I would like to apologize to you guys because I did uh, um, order big baller shoes for both of you for Christmas. Oh, uh, were they out of <laughs> stock? Still waiting for them to come in. Oh, oh man. Come on. Come on. But good news with the whole big baller thing. Uh, after LeVar the other night was talking shit about Luke Walton, uh, other teams have now threatened reporters that report for said teams to uh, revoke their passes, their press passes, if they interview LeVar. Wow. That's, yes. Yeah, so I it's like more that. than just the Lakers. Well, that's the way to step in because, you know, everyone's yes. saying, like, the VAR needs to shut up, but it's like it's, nobody's, you know, he's not putting the mics in his face himself. Right. They're the ones doing it. If so. you stop hitting the record button, we'll stop exactly. hearing it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So please, there's a reason we don't play LeVar clips on this show because right. he needs to be silenced. This yeah, is you ridiculous. Know, that's what I'm saying. If, you know, I got a microphone put in my face and, you know, every time someone saw me, they thought of him filter gentleman, I'm going to say what yeah. I want. You know <laughs> <Yep>. what I mean? <laughs> Trick <laughs> me here, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want me to say? Whatever. Yeah. I hope I can say it. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Could you imagine Dan's like sideline interview? Like, so Dan, Lakers doing pretty good tonight. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what we wanted to hear. Yeah. ESPN puts it on. What, what do you think of Kuzma tonight? Boop, boop, doo. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hear that. Headlines the next day is Dan says that's right. That's yeah. exactly. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dan finds a new catchphrase. Uh, no oh, dear. Uh, all right. And oh, speaking of me. Yes. Well, sort of. <laughs> In the old Booze and Tug League, which is our fantasy football showdown with mm-hmm. the Booze League, uh, it was the three of us versus the three of them, and we needed a fourth team on either side. So on our team, we had the illustrious Dan's Beard. That's right. And they had uh, Darby the Booze Hound, who did Wolf. not. Yeah. Was, she's a bitch. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it probably came, hung over the whole season. Probably, yeah. probably I'm sure they all dog. were. Yeah. yeah, it came down to the commish of the booze league, Wiley. Wiley. Uh, he probably didn't realize it was happening because he's too hungover. Yeah, probably. he didn't yeah. set his lineup. Uh, too hungover to set his lineup. Yeah, it yeah. came down to him and Dan's illustrious beard. The fake team. The fake team. Yep. Yes. Just like Darby was a fake team, Dan's beard is a fake team. Mm-hmm. In the championships. And Dan's beard was the winner. <laughs> oh, 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 he was oh, victorious. You know, and that's the thing. Give this man a beard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of shit talking on their end about us, but it's like, hey, we had to deal with this monstrous fake team in our division just destroying mm-hmm. us. And uh, that's why we did so bad. And you know, we got beat by our own fake team. We really did. And yeah. Wiley thought it was funny until he got beat too. Right. You know. So hey, championship to my beard. That is that's right. Glorious, glorious. Yes. Beard. So I can't uh, shave this thing now. I'll, I'll be sending them your address so you can expect that trophy in the oh, mail. Oh yeah, please. There, there is a trophy. Get out of here. There is a trophy. So uh, I, I guess it should go to you in of honor course. of your beard. This is my beard. You did manage the team. 
Yeah, but I mean, all I did was projected stats. Yeah. The rules were, were no matter you know what you feel about the person, <laughs> it's highest projected score. That's true. I mean, you did like set the lineup and have the team, but you know, I did grow the beard. I guess. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> had you not grown it, I would not have had a team to manage. That's yes, true. You so uh, I. So we, it's all up to your beard. That's right. You know, I'll take odd weeks. You take even weeks. There we go. Perfect. I like it. And it's gonna be a cup, so we can drink out of it. It'll be oh great. my god, I can't wait. Yeah, I hope it's dishwasher safe. <laughs> We'll find out. Yes. So uh, that happened. Booze League. <laughs> yeah. That's right. My beard won. Yeah. Deservedly. Hey, yeah, two years in a row. Yeah, you won last year. And then my beard won. And then your oh. Then my dick's going to win next year. <laughs> Dan's dick. <laughs> Dan's dick. That's my team name next week. Dan's dick. <laughs> boop, boop, <be-do. laughs> Suck it, dick, Wiley. My dick is going to win. I swear. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Dan's dick. <laughs> uh, in the year after that, Dan's taint. Dan, Dan's dick beat Wiley again. Oh, oh, my God. Did it ever. All right. If anybody's still listening, I, I teased this earlier. Maybe we should have played this before sports. But uh, <laughs> here to make us look like a-holes and to class up this joint just a little bit. Just uh, now? Yeah, just now. <laughs> uh, we have Nicole from beautyandbeer.com. She is reviewing a new brewery for us up in NorCal. So take it away. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Nicole from Beauty and Beer, and I'm super excited to talk to you about my recent trip to Waterman Brewing Company. It had been about a month since I'd had some beer at a local brewery, so it was nice to get out and sample some of the local offerings they had. I hit up my buddy Justin, and off we went. When we arrived, we were warmly greeted by the beer tender who was very busy, but made time to answer any questions that I had or that Justin had. And she was very informative about all of their beers. I ordered a flight of beers and my flight consisted of the Super Citra Pale Ale, um, which was an IPA, Tropical Haze, which was also an IPA, Old Town Porter, which was an Imperial Double Porter, and Bald Ron's Red, which was a red style ale. I think my favorite one, honestly, I'm a little torn between the Super Citra Pale Ale and the Tropical Haze, but I think I'm gonna go more towards the Tropical Haze. I just love the clean, citrusy. I kind of got grapefruit in the taste. I'm very crisp, so I really enjoyed that beer a lot. Um, In addition to the great beer that they had, um, they were doing trivia that night, which was really fun. It was great atmosphere. Everyone was having a really good time. And there also was a food truck on site, which was Smokin' Tacos. And they're actually a pretty new food truck, but they have a really good selection of smoked meat. So they had like barbecue sandwiches. I myself had a hot link sandwich, but they also offer tacos and quesadillas, but really good flavor. And it just went really well pairing their food with Waterman Brewing's beers. Um, So that was really awesome. Uh, I did see someone's tacos and they looked absolutely delicious. So I got to chat with them and just really happy that Waterman Brewing is supporting a new food truck. They've only been, I think, on the road for like two or three weeks. But all in all, it was a great night, great atmosphere, good beer. I definitely would check them out. Waterman Brewing just kind of remodeled and revamped their brewery, so it was fun to finally check it out because it was under construction for a while. Um, And I definitely recommend trying their beers their beers do change so you may not find these same beers on the beer menu but if you do go definitely check out one of these beers that i have tried the tropical haze and honestly the old town porter is good i'm not a huge porter fan i would definitely drink it again though because it wasn't heavy at all it was a really thin roasty taste And if you want to see pictures or learn more about this brewery or any other brewery that I've visited, please go over to beautyandbeer.com and make sure to follow me on Instagram at beautyandbeer. Cheers. And cheers to you. Waterman Brewing, I looked it up. It's just outside Sacramento, California. If you're up in NorCal, go check them out. Tacos and beer. I mean, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Nothing better. That's right. Nothing better. 
What is your guys' favorite taco? Do you have like a, mine is uh, Al Pastor. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. That's hard to... Uh, you might go with just asada, man. Nice and simple. That's right. Uh, wow. That's it. Yeah, that's tough. I'll... I guess I'll just say Al Pastor. I mean, all right. I love that. I, I mean, love that shit. tacos in general. I just love tacos. Yeah, yeah. I think the salsa is what makes it. Mm. You know what I mean? A little that uh, cotija cheese on top. <laughs> oh, it's so good. good I said that's so white. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you to uh, Nicole. You can check her out beautyandbeer dot com as well as beauty and beer and is spelt out, not the uh, little fancy sign there. Mm. On uh, all the social medias, Beauty and Beer, you can check her out. Check out her drinking uh, adventures. Yes. And uh, yeah, and if you're up in the uh, Sacramento area, check out Waterman Brewing. Yes. Ma- makes me want to uh, make a road trip. Yeah. Boom. We do need like a beer road trip. Right? Yeah. I know. Somebody should pay us to do that. Take they the should. show on the road. That's right. Mm-hmm. Instead of antique road show, it'd be like drunk people road show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should plan this out. Hey, tell a friend uh, next week, whoever the the high uh, city is. You know I mean? <laughs> we're on our way. <laughs> yep, that's Send where we're going. Money. It's like shit. Ottawa again. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot afford that. Wow, damn it! Uh, Dig out my passport. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, cool. Thank you, Nicole. Hopefully, uh, we hear more from her and some Absolutely. tasty breweries yeah. up there. Very tasty. Old timey word of the week. Mm-hmm. I guess phrase. All hat, no cattle. All hat, no cattle. It's an empty boaster or a man who is all talk. And no action. Oh, Dan's smiling. Dan's got something. That man said he was going to talk to the lady with the buzz, but he was all hat and no cattle. <laughs> <laughs> you hit it. Oh, well, he didn't. No, no, no. no. Yeah, he was all, was all hat, no cattle. All yeah. hat, no cattle. Not yeah. the guy all hat, no cattle. He hit nothing. Exactly. Yeah. I did hit it. <laughs> but the guy with no hat and all cattle, he got it. <laughs> wow. Right. We've taken that too far. Yeah, we did. Correct. All right, let's move on. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed. And you can find her on Instagram at craftlass. Craft.lass. Craftlass. Yeah. Lass. That's lass. another old-timey word right there, no? <laughs> that's true. Yeah, like lad and lass. Yeah. Like, hey, lassie. Look at that. But not not the show. Lassie. Yeah, no, no, oh, no, no, not yeah, Timmy yeah. and Lassie. No, no, no. no La- sorry. Uh, anyway, it's so a craft dot lass. L a s s. Yeah, she is a lass. Oh mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. showing the gentleman right now. Uh, and she's drinking a cat lady IPA. Oh, oh, cat lady. Hopefully, she's not a cat lady. She's drinking cat lady IPA. Uh, uh, anyways, give her a follow at craft lass on the old Instagrams. Uh, I don't think you'll be sorry. Mm-hmm. All right, we have a. Another beer to get to. And oh, it was, nice. It was donated to us. Right on. We do take beer donations. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. And we do take beer donations. Do you have a beer you want to give us? We will take it. Yes. Yeah, we've, uh, please. We've had some severe fire damage, and it uh, <laughs> looks like we're going to be like getting flooding, and so we can use oh, some yeah. beer donations. we got a lot to drink about. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah uh, we're, we're stressed. It's raining. It's drizzling here in California, yeah. which means uh, <laughs> it's bumper cars out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's rough. We go crazy. Yes. So uh, Elvia has gifted slash donated us Dragon's Tooth Stout from Elysian Brewing. Uh, this one is four has a four point oh three on beer beer advocate talking is hard, three point eight two on untapped, eight point one percent ABV and has thirty six IBUs. Dragon's Tooth Stout is a sturdy, malty, rich, velvety, and smooth beer. The name is uh, referential to the founder of Thebes. Founders of Thebes. That's with a B, not thieves. With a V. Yeah. Uh, warriors who sprang from the earth when the teeth of a slain dragon were slown down by Cadmus. I don't know what any of this means. Cadmus from Hunger Games? <laughs> wow. Cadmus. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Made with 10% rolled oats, roasted barley, crystal, crystal Munich, and chocolate malts, bittered mm-hmm. with magnum, finished with cascade and centennial hops. Man, after all those big words, I need a beer. I am. Oh, damn. I, I need to drink. I will, it. Jack. Yeah. Whew. So Holy intense. Cow. <laughs> damn. This smells sweet and chocolatey. Yes. And my nerves are shot now. I'm sorry. That uh, that, that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Jack's intense. Yeah, yeah. Have, have some more beer. Yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. 
Call him this nerd. Give this man a beat. All right, that's yeah, better. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, Jack. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is sweet. This is chocolatey, and the nose mm-hmm. uh, equal on the tongue. Correct. Mm. Very good. Woo! That is a lot of sweet. It is right. Yeah, it might be a little, uh, maybe a little too much sweet. Yeah, no. I like sweet, so I got it. That's true. This I, is uh, like the it. bitch who brought us those pumpkin beers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, he's not like a wily bitch, but he did bring us pumpkin beers. Uh-huh. Makes I him did. a basic bitch. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It, it's it's kind of got like a like you said. It is like a little done like way too sweet like mm-hmm. a little kind of like n- like it's hard to go from you know uh wookie jack the and best all that. In the yeah, world. exactly yeah. Oh, top five you know to, to to really taste like the the craft in that you know and to go to here it's like oh. there's a lot of sugar in this you mm-hmm. know it's like a little like uh sloppy yeah. <laughs> oh, man <laughs> well it is our sloppy seconds <laughs> that's true or i guess <laughs> thirds because we had beer science but uh either way we'll drink it and, absolutely uh, we'll always take beer donations we will. Yes. Send them to the unfiltered gentleman. Yes. Care of. No. Uh, if you do want to send us some beer donations or you want to review, you review your beer, if you want us to talk coherently, uh, email <laughs> the unfiltered gentleman at gmail.com. Good luck with that. Yeah, we'll do our best, but mm-hmm. no guarantees made. Uh, all right, let's move on to some news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time <laughs> for booze news. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's laughing. Yeah, that was delayed reaction to the rundown here. <laughs> Usually he does that before the show. I know. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, so Dogfish Head is coming up with a new beer called It's the End of the Wart as We Know It. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that what you were laughing yeah, at? Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was funny. So this is like a, a superfood in a beer. You know, like people eat all the superfoods like kale and blueberries and whatever shit. This is all those things... In a beer. So, like, if you were, you know, going camping, you could just have this beer with you and nothing else. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they say, to make this off-centered ale, Dogfish blended an intensely fruity mixture of blueberries, acai, goji berries, along with an assortment of ingredients including purple sweet potatoes, rose hips, chia seed, flax seed, spelt, whatever that is, oats, and quinoa. Well, it's the end of the world, oh. war, end of the wort as we know it. Is nutrient rich. Uh, Sam Calione, who's the uh, owner of Dogfish Head, says we are not making any health claims in association with this beer. We are merely sharing our brewing process and the culinary ingredients we chose for the recipe that are rich in alluring aromas and flavors. They say it's slightly tart and subtly sweet with jammy blueberry, cranberry, and cherry flavors. This medium-bodied beer clocks in at nine percent ABV and is a critical off-centered ale to include in your survival bunker. <laughs> They're also going to sell it for forty five bucks a bottle. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's going to come with like a little survivor, survivor kit. Thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like things that I'll really need or beer. Well, beer. That's true. Mm-hmm. But forty five dollars. Yeah, if I'm stocking a shelter, correct. I'm going to need a lot more than two beers. You know what I'm saying? No, no kidding. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to skimp on some crappy beer. I don't know if I could afford the $45 price tag. Yeah. If this is truly the end of the world, mm-hmm. you got to stock up. Yeah. Know? Where's that sticky bunky? That's, That's right. right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Get some of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Ooh, a new reason to go to Vegas mm-hmm. as if we needed more reasons oh, to man. go to Vegas. Uh, in April, mm-hmm. they're going to be having the great Vegas festival of beer. Oh, when? April. Wait, but like, <laughs> what part of April? I will tell you. Friday the 6th and Saturday the 7th. You're kidding. I kid you not. Are you going to be there already? I might be. Oh, yeah. I, I just booked trips. So, uh, <laughs> oh, man. I'm planning on going now. Holy shit. They're going to feature over 100 of the world's top craft breweries across four blocks of downtown wow. Las Vegas. Sample from over, over 500 different craft brews. Enjoy over-the-top culinary and craft beer creations oh at the Get Motley VIP Experience and experience craft beer in a whole new way at educational sessions and many one-of-a-kind beer-centric event experiences. Holy nice. Holy shit. Yeah. Vegas trip? Mm-hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's holding back tears. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's going to be gangster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, book your trips to Vegas. Uh, oh. Nope. New hero for us all. Mm. A woman has <laughs> a woman chugged an entire bottle of cognac rather than give it to airport security. Oh man! Oh, oh I'm gonna marry her. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys read about this or hear about it, this? Uh, no, sugar I did not. from mm. uh, next Friday. 
The movie mm-hmm. next Friday, do you remember? Mm-mm. It's uh, it's been way Uncle too Elroy's long. like girlfriend or whatever. No. She asks Craig, "You want some cognac?" He's like, it's a little early. <laughs> she just starts drinking the whole thing. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, well, this woman, uh, when she arrived at Beijing Capital International Airport for a noon flight to transfer to Wenzhou, it's pretty good, right? She was Not stopped bad. at the security checkpoint for trying to bring an entire bottle of Remy Martin XO Excellence, mm. valued at roughly $200, through her carry-on baggage. <laughs> no big deal, right? But a bit, bit of a dilemma. Uh, so what did she do? According to a report... She certainly did not do what the uh, Transportation Security Administration suggests you do, which is... Dump it out. Well, check, dump it out or check it. Uh, she did none of that. Instead, she took matters into her own hands and sat down in a corner and drank the entire bottle nice. of cognac herself. Fuck. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, our traveling buddy couldn't hold her liquor very well. Uh-oh. I bet. According to reports, she quite quickly began acting wildly and yelling incoherently. Uh-oh. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> she fell to the floor and stayed there until the police arrived. Oh. They took one look at her and did not allow her to board her flight. Oh, oh wow. Her family was called to pick her up. When she sobered up, she was oh. released to her family. How embarrassing. Yeah. Just like like Wiley couldn't hold her boobs. Oh man! <laughs> mm-hmm. Another chick. She, yeah, I bet she 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 still did her thing. Like the next day, though, she wasn't all. Oh over. yeah, I'm sure she got up. Yeah, and, probably yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's fine the next day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She boarded another flight. Or I mean, something. who yep. needs to like you know call things off the next day because you're hungover? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm a day late. So what? Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> That's it's worth right. it. Yeah, um, and finally, I'll tell you guys, Silva Brewing, which I've been to, it's up in Paso Robles, California. It's a very small, small brew. We found it by accident. We went to a bar one night when we were up there for some wakeboarding session, and uh, they happened to have, like, they had a lot of craft beer. Like, oh, we got, like, oh, we have our own, too. Like, oh, what's your own? Like, oh, it's Silva Brewing. Like, the fuck is that? It was, like, it was very speakeasy-esque. It was, like, this little room in the back, and <laughs> you could kind of see, like, a, a tank sticking out and stuff. <laughs> well, apparently, Silva Brewing is owned by Chuck Silva, who started, or who was uh, of Green Flash fame so the former brewer from green flash which we all know and love mm-hmm. uh has his own up in past robus i hate to talk shit about craft beer mm-hmm. i hate to throw shade as the kids say <laughs> i don't even know what you're talking about anymore and <laughs> what <laughs> apparently that means turning the lights off i don't know i know what you mean yeah uh we had probably three of the beers and none of them were good wow like borderline pour out bad like wow let's chug this oh. as quick as possible because they are horrendous scott's Ooh. like challenge accepted i know yeah I should, where is that <laughs> 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 i should bring him back now look maybe they've figured out what was wrong they worked out the kinks in their new system i don't know i mean Correct. The, the guy is great i mean he's, hey green flash has some good stuff fanny kappa can turn it around <laughs> right you know anybody can yeah <laughs> So I, I hate to talk shit, but it was it was really bad. Oh no! And I was very surprised to read that they signed a distribution deal with Stone Brewing. Oh wow! I was like, why? Oh, what, shit. what what was Stone drinking that I wasn't? Because <laughs> it was no bueno. Interesting. Yeah. So I, uh, as a fair and open minded journalist, mm-hmm. the next time I'm up there, will go and try Silva Brewing once again to see. If maybe it was an off week of beer that Atta they, boy. you know, got infected or something. Right. I have to be fair. Have I to agree. Be fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, they deserve a, a fair shot. You know. Right. If nothing else, I'm fair. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. But every uh, brewery deserves a second chance. Yes. C C I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if Anna Kappa deserves a second chance, that's right. So does Silva yeah, for everybody. I dig, yeah, I dig it. That'll be some new uh, beer research to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, broken the music. Okay. Beer. Luke Beer? <laughs> Luke Beer? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, LeVar. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, so uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Next week, mm-hmm. we have a very cool interview I did with the uh, owners and brewer of McLeod's in Van Nuys, California. Oh, nice. Yes, we talked about their beer, and we also talked about their very cool uh, event coming up in a couple of weeks. So you guys should check that out and then, uh, you know, check out their event. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's like Scottish Day and they're going to have Scottish pies 
and beer and, and kilts. Shepherd's pie? <laughs> Dude, th- I asked if they're going to have uh, scotch egg. Have you guys ever had scotch egg? No. So good. They said they, they're going to have scotch egg. So oh, wow. I hope they hold to that one. That one's not easy to make, so right. we'll, we'll see about that. But uh, looking forward to that. So uh, check out the interview with McClouds next week. I hope you guys enjoy. And the following week, you can go to their event. Uh, for us, you can call us at 805-538-BEER. Two three three seven. Especially if you're drunk, drunk. Come dollars. on, please, 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 please. Uh, TheUnfilteredGentleman dot com. The Unfiltered Gentleman on the social medias, except for Twitter, is Unfiltered Gents. Thanks to Elvia for not only the segment yes. but the beer donation. Beer, correct? Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. Very much appreciated. And thank you to Nicole for uh, reviewing Waterman Brewing and check her out at beer. Excuse me, beautyandbeer dot com. I think that's everything. So on that note, uh, make sure you're all staying hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Wiley. And uh, <laughs> good night, everybody.